make a lot of noise for the wonderful Eric Scott! <laughs> I'm not originally from Chicago. Uh, I went home for the holidays uh, a few months ago. And uh, I have a very small, very old family. Like, I'm an only child. Uh, my dad's 70. My grandma just turned 95. So I was buying gifts that I'm going to get back <laughs> pretty soon. You know, like, that, that, is a, that is a tough way to shop. You know? Like, I hope my grandma likes the Entourage box set. Because, uh, that's, all my family came over to my house for Christmas, and I have some uh, some cousins, and they don't talk to me at all. Um, they just play games on their phones all the time. I read an article the other day that some parents are now paying like coaches or tutors uh, to get their kids better at the game Fortnite. Oh, no. Yeah, it's real. That's crazy, because when I was growing up, we had to not get laid all by ourselves. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, no one was teaching us how to do it. I never really got into video games growing up. I only played one because they let us do it at school. It was the Oregon Trail. You know what I mean? yeah, the Oregon Trail, that's fun. They talk about violence in video games now. But as a third grader, I led a party of settlers who all died of the shits. So my little cousin was like, I just killed 50 zombies. And I was like, oh yeah, I buried my son. So, that's not I'm an only child, which is fine. It was weird though, because my parents always drove minivans. <laughs> you know how sad it is to every day sit alone in the back of a minivan? <laughs> it was like taking an airport shuttle to middle school. So that was, uh, strange. I think. I was back, uh, when I was back at home, I was talking to a family friend and she, uh, she said, you know, I feel so bad for people in your generation uh, because you all go to college, you're all drowning in debt, and you're all receptionists. I was like, you know someone who's a receptionist? <laughs> How in the hell did they get that job? I'm interning at a dog walking company right now. And if this golden retriever doesn't write me letter of recommendation, <laughs> I may never be an Uber driver, so things, things are tough out there. I love living in Chicago, it's great. I live uh, right down the street from an elementary school now, and a few months ago when it was nice out, all the kids were outside, and they were having that classic kid argument. Uh, the, I bet my dad can beat up your dad. Remember that? I, got, I kinda got nostalgia. And this kid goes, oh yeah? I've got two dads. <laughs> I was like, hell yeah, Chicago, bring it. Childhood's different now. <laughs> and then that kid looks to another kid, he goes, hey Weston, I bet my two dads can beat up your two dads. <laughs> and then Weston kind of looked down, he goes, uh, actually, my dad's got divorced. Yeah, and he goes, oh my God, man, I'm so sorry. If you need anything, let me know. Cause like deep down, he's a good kid. <laughs> and he goes, uh, you know, it's fine. They got remarried. I have four dads now! <laughs> I was like, man, kids really are the future. Uh, this, this is great. I got out of a relationship a few months ago, so I'm back, back dating now, which is weird because when you're with uh, someone for a while, you learn what they like, you get your moves, and your moves aren't universal. Uh, so, so I'm learning. Especially, like, sexually. They're like community college credits. They don't all transfer. Uh, that's, that's, Every time I go on a date, I have to be like, all right, Eric, you can't choke strangers. Um, you can't... They don't know you won't kill them. Uh, <laughs> that trust hasn't been established yet. I was with a girl the other night, she goes, is choking like your thing? And I was like, ah, I just missed my ex. You know, I just, uh, I miss her. Oh, she's done. <laughs> Gotta find out what people like. I think it's more important to find out what they dislike that avoids a lot of conflict. Like I used to date a girl who would get really mad at me if I put periods in text messages. That was like a real fight we would have. She read that as an abrupt stop, like I was angry with her. I was like, man, you must really hate books. <laughs> Those things are full of them. <laughs> the girl asked me the other night uh, for a first date to go to karaoke. Which is fine. But it's weird that they just let us do that. 
Could you imagine going into a bar and trying to sing if karaoke had never been invented? You just walk in all confident to the owner, like, hi, I'd like to sing. <laughs> You're like, is it an original? It's like, oh God, no, no, it's not. Um, like, well, do you know the words? Well, some of them. <laughs> but it's fine, I'm gonna have them on like a screen. It's like, you're gonna be able to read and sing? I'll be about four words behind the whole time. Um, like, well, cool, do this every Tuesday. Uh, this is great. I don't know. I'm trying to keep up with the news. There's a lot going on, you know? I know uh, women are angry right now. <laughs> I picked up on that one. Um, some of you yelled it at me. Uh, <laughs> and here's the thing, ladies, I'm really on your side. Like, I do think it's strange that large amounts of men in Congress are like choosing for women, mainly reproductive rights, and not necessarily even about the issue itself. I just think it's weird that it's a man choosing for a woman. That's what I don't get. Uh, because as a 25-year-old guy, I don't know what the hell's going on with a woman. I just believe whatever you tell me. <laughs> You'd be like, yeah, Eric, every month I get my period and go out in the woods and shed my skin like a snake. And I'm like, yeah, and it's beautiful, okay? <laughs> You're so strong. You're so strong. <laughs> Can you be nice to me? Is that possible? <laughs> a lot of politics going on. It's hard to talk about it. This lady uh, started talking about politics to me recently. She's all angry. Uh, transgender people came up. She, she's all in a huddle. She goes, you mean if a man puts on a dress I just have to call him a woman? That doesn't make any sense. I was like, well, you just put mayonnaise on potatoes and called it a salad, so... <laughs> do labels matter that much to you? Didn't seem like it. She didn't like that. Yeah, then I kept calling it a tranase after that. And she... <laughs> hated that one even more. I, uh... I date women, um, which in... 2019 is uh, pretty boring. Um, there's a lot of new stuff out there. I don't know. A bunch of apps or something. Um, you just do whatever. Yeah, being, uh, being gay is real cool. You know, Gay is in right now. Gay is hot. Gay is the new black. That's what I've been saying. And black is also good. Um, that's just a white guy tone line. That's about it. I do have a job uh, when I'm not doing this. Uh, I'm an indoor skydiving instructor. That's what I do for a career. <laughs> yeah. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's, a, it's a vertical wind tunnel. It produces enough wind. It simulates the free fall of a skydive. You actually fly around. People love it. Um, it was actually just voted in the Chicago Tribune as the number one place to bring your step kids. So, <laughs> Um, it's so fun there, you can gain approval. Like, like, I've been petitioning to change our slogan to come as Jeff, leave as dad. <laughs> Is everyone a step parent here? Is that a... <laughs> You're like, oh no, and you write it down. You're like, okay, indoor skydiving. Maybe I'll kind of get that birthday card I've always wanted. <laughs> <laughs> now, uh, before I had the, uh, the indoor skydiving job, I had a buddy of mine, he was doing uh, outdoor skydiving. Uh, which is just skydiving, if you really break it down. Um, <laughs> think about it. And he was, uh, I went with him, I was really interested. And at this point in his training, he was learning how to pack a parachute. Uh, but the guy who was teaching us, he was telling us, but he was using only sex references. He was like, all right, you're gonna grab it up here by the clip. You're gonna tuck in the labias, and you're gonna push it down into the G spot. I swear to God, that's what he said. He was willing to bet our lives that we understood what he was talking about. <laughs> also, ruled out the possibility for any questions. It's like, real quick, on the parachute, where's that a clip? <laughs> ah, same as a woman? <laughs> Let's jump out of this plane, dude. <laughs> you can't really just like rub around on a parachute and wait for it to tell you to stop, you know? <laughs> a parachute's never faked its opening because it cares about that. <laughs> 
I have several ex-girlfriends that will tell you I don't really know how to pack a parachute. Uh, I try real hard. <laughs> Some nights I'd rather just pack it themselves. Okay. I imagine just getting on the plane and the guy's like, I hope these kids get pussy or else they're gonna die. Uh, Alright, everybody, thank you so much. I've been Eric Smith.